Director of Anti-Doping at UK Sport. Good morning to you. Look, first and foremost, when we're talking about a 15-year-old here, anything that, whether something has been taken deliberately or not, you can't blame a 15-year-old. I mean, surely she has to be in the care of someone. Well, it has taken some years for the World Anti-Doping Code that controls all our anti-doping rules across the world to recognize this. And what I think is is important, we now have a category called protected persons as of 1st of January last year. And yet I wonder if the procedures themselves have actually accommodated the fact that these are children taking part in sport and we are subjecting them to the same rules, the same procedures as we do adult athletes. So yes, the expectation has been extremely high on a very young person and and we should be doing more within the rules to make sure that we're protecting athletes when they're going through these very rigorous, very, in some respects, intimidating procedures, not only the test, but also the disciplinary process. So, you know, if we start off with the fact that we're asking, you know, young people to go into a toilet to provide a urine sample under the gaze of a complete stranger, and then, of course, we translate that up to the disciplinary um, hearing that she faced initially um, to try and lift the provisional suspension. And then a second time where she's facing the International Olympic Committee, the World Anti-Doping Agency and her own international federation to who wanted to reimpose that suspension while she's actually at the games. So there's huge pressure gone on here. And the decision was to allow her to compete, that it would be obviously unfair to uh, impose that provisional suspension. And so I really am not surprised that in the end, the pressure has become too much. But certainly what we've then seen is a response to her rather heartbreaking performance as one of, you know, perhaps that did the entourage do enough to comfort her? And and I think that's a really difficult question because they have to remain professional and yet she is there competing and, and she clearly had huge, huge difficulties with that particular performance. I mean, it's interesting, the very phraseology we use when we talk about this, because you say she is facing disciplinary uh, procedures. Mm. She has to face this. She has to do that. She's 15. She's a child. In any other respect, it would be the adults who look after who would be facing the disciplinary procedures, not Mm. her. Yeah. And, and as part of that process, there will be that investigation into her entourage, into, and that includes her own parents, of course, um, that you, we would have that investigation into who potentially gave her those substances. And, and the assumption is she didn't do this on her own. But that should be the assumption for any doping violation. So we make sure that we thoroughly understand how this situation came about, particularly if we ever want to make sure we're trying to prevent it happening again. But we are in that situation where the athlete has to take the responsibility. It's called strict liability. And so ultimately the penalty will be served by the the athlete, but it may not be the full weight of the penalty if it's found that the doping violation is proven. In in terms of competing in elite sport as a whole, I mean, are we hitting a point where we should say actually children should not be allowed to compete? You know, it should be, you know, 16 or 18 and above. Well, it, it does sort of raise a question mark over why we have a youth Olympic Games when we've also got, if you like, a, a kind of adult Olympic Games. So we're allowing an open category. So we're allowing those who are uh, younger and maybe would have competed at a youth Olympic Games if that particular sport was w- was taking place at that Games uh, to also be given a, a further chance to c- compete uh, on the adult stage. And, you know, huge expectations then. Perhaps there needs to be an age limit for the, if you like, the senior Olympics. But certainly what we really need to make sure we're doing is not exploiting children. We're not, you know, really pushing them too far in sport too early um, in the pursuit of medals, in the pursuit of glory. And, And that's been something that has been 
really a, a worrying concern across sport for many, many years. And we've seen it in sports where young uh, athletes do compete gymnastics and swimming and, and obviously in skating where there has been the potential for uh, abuse of the athletes by their entourage in the pursuit of, of top performances.